Okay, good morning guys. Thursday 6th of September. This is your market briefing. Uh, let's just check ch the charts just to see what's happening. We've been through European Open and here's the DAX and this kind of tells the story really with the DAX opening lower and testing um, the key psychological level of 12,000. Let's go back to a daily chart just to kind of get this in perspective because yesterday was really important. Technically, uh, the DAX broke this kind of double bottom, the June 28th low, and then we hit that kind of same area uh, on the 15th of August. And here we are yesterday, breaking and closing below that level. And now that's set up a, a, an immediate test of 12,000 here. Uh, if you go back to a weekly chart, I mean, you can see that the last time we were testing 12,000, this was back in April. Um, so yeah, five month lows here. You know, we're, I guess, used to reading about, you know, the almost permanent upside trend for US stocks and new all time highs and new all time highs and so on. But actually, um, the divergence with pretty much the rest of the world is now pretty pronounced. And here in Europe, um, the DAX at a five month low, breaking the key double bottom from, for the, I guess, let's call it the summer double bottom being taken out. Um, what we have had this morning kind of to help with this, we'll, I mean, we'll talk about the emerging market space in a minute, um, but we had data earlier this morning from Germany itself and the numbers were weak. This is industrial uh, orders. So unexpectedly dropped in July, which kind of went alongside the big drop that we had in June. Um, obviously, you can see on this chart, May was a strong month, but this is crazy. Look at this. We just had the seventh month date, the seventh month of the year. And look, six out of seven months this year, uh, negative prints on industrial production. So, you know, this is definitely uh, a really clear, uh, really clear evidence of what's happened in 2018. And what's happened is that, you know, quite powerful economic momentum we saw on the back end of 2017 in Europe has definitely hit a kind of soft patch. And um, so this is why, I mean, go back to the DAX chart. Now, why is the DAX at a five month low? Why is the DAX trading the same prices that it was trading back in February? Um, and it's because we've hit that kind of bit of, bit of a brick wall on that European economic momentum. If you, if you, if you have a look at the S&P chart, of course, it's, it's starkly different. Yes, we've had some downside. Um, over the last couple of sessions. But look at the weekly chart for the S&P. It's a massively different story. Um, let me just get rid of some of these lines here. Tidy this up. Um, you know, we're up, up here, 28.85, uh, currently trading. Of course, the all-time high um, set back end of last week, up just above the 2,900 level. Where was the S&P trading in, in February, well, it was trading obviously quite dramatically lower. So whilst Europe has just stumbled a little bit, obviously there's still decent growth. It's just that that momentum, uh, that acceleration in growth from 2017 has not followed into 2018. And so Europe's sideways. Of course, also uh, the other kind of key factors why European stocks are struggling relative to the US is because of um, obviously, risks specific to this continent, number one being Brexit, uh, number two being Italy, uh, number three, you would say Turkey, and that situation, of course, much more exposure um, to Turkey and, and to Turkish banks here in Europe than there is in the US. Uh, also, technology, um, you know, technology is a big part of the S&P story, the biggest sector in the S&P is technology, and you've got your Apples and your Amazons, um, you know, gunning up to uh, $1 trillion valuations. And so that's obviously helped to spur out performance on the U.S. stock market front. Um, of course, in Europe, we're kind of more heavyweight banks, and it's that banking sector that's really struggling. So that's kind of reasons for your divergence. Um, so that's one reason that's kind of feeding this negative sentiment um, this morning as Europe gets going. Uh, German factory orders number, not what the doctor ordered. Um, there's other stuff. Let's have a check on the headlines. Um, 
Trump in the news inevitably. Uh, Trump tells Times to unmask op-ed writer on national security grounds. So just yet another kind of episode in the soap opera that is the Trump White House here. You've got an anonymous source inside the Trump administration um, writing uh, 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 or responsible for a kind of piece in the in the Times and uh, it's just another Trump story I mean it's not really anything to get excited about but um, the person the individual um, is saying that um, internally there is a movement going on to try and thwart Trump uh, thwart the president's more misguided impul impulses until he's out of office. Uh, the root of the problem is the president's amorality. Anyone who works with him knows he is not moored to any discernible first principles that guide his decision making. Of course, Trump has been all over this tweeting things like treason uh, and trying to get the Times to reveal the source. So it's a, just a sideshow of the soap opera. You're not getting any market-related influences here. What's more important is Asia, so further negative sentiment through the Asian session, so that ongoing, um, well, one of the big stories of the summer, uh, Turkey, Argentina, uh, more broadly, you're getting FX weakness um, in other nations that are carrying trade, uh, co sorry, current account deficits, so you've got the Indonesians, you've got the Indians, you've got the South Africans, all of these lot, um, a lot of weakness in their currencies, and of course this is spilling into the equity space, so this is uh, talking about divergence amongst stock markets, I was talking about the DAX and the S&P a minute ago, well here we're looking at um, the all world index of developed stocks, so that's the blue line, and then you've got the Asia Pacific index, is the white line. So, I mean, this blue line uh, obviously has been trending higher, but as we've just discovered, that's pretty much entirely due to the US. Obviously, this, this blue line, which is the all-world developed stocks, um, not getting any upside action from anything going on in Europe, of course. So it's really more of a US story, but certainly a pronounced divergence versus Asia. And you can see the timing of this divergence. Uh, of course, it's definitely trade war risk, and today is uh, an important day. On that front, um, this is where the public consultation uh, comes to an end, and this is where Trump has been asking the public and consulting with the public on uh, what products would be appropriate to add tariffs to, and he's eyeing up a further He's eyeing up tariffs on a further $200 billion worth of Chinese imports. Okay, so that will take, uh, we want to hear news on that. It might not be until tomorrow um, that we get more news flow on that. Uh, but that's something to be mindful of in terms of timing. But certainly the divergence is very pronounced. And what's happened overnight is actually you've seen some of these Asian stock markets hitting bear market territory, which means they're 20% down off, off recent highs. Um, so, you know, just more of the same. You know, this story, of course, has been shaping market um, sentiment uh, for, for weeks now, and the story's still here, and it's uh, not going away yet. Um, so let's have a look elsewhere. We're talking about stocks. Um, let's have a look what happened yesterday with regards to the pound. Uh, let's talk Brexit. So here's a annotated chart just looking back actually over the last week couple of weeks really in terms of how the value of the pound has been uh, shifting relative to the value of the dollar so plenty of volatility here and a lot of this is due to commentary coming from either the British camp or the European camp uh, commentary with regards to how the Brexit negotiation is developing and progressing and are they going to be able to make a, an agreement on trade and are they going if they are they're going to need to do this pretty soon uh, that that March 2019 kind of line in the sand is, is of course getting ever closer so this is the volatility in recent weeks now we had a big move to the upside back on the 27th of August this is off positive comments from Barnier so the guy heading up the the negotiation from the EU side he made some positive comments and you saw cable here ramp higher that all kind of then dissipated and we kind of drifted back lower over the 
into, into Friday was a negative session. And then the, this week on Monday, we kind of um, got going on, on the back foot um, as Barnier then kind of reversed the comments that he'd made earlier on uh, the week before. Then we're down, down, down. Yesterday, big spike to the upside, uh, more than a 100 pip move, a 150 pip, you know, straight line to the upside off the back of a Bloomberg headline that suggested Germany and the UK are looking to drop key Brexit demands, i.e. Uh, suggesting that you know, major progress has been made at a breakthrough in the negotiations and thing ramped higher. But then uh, later, hour or so later, the German government, through a, a spokesman, said that actually their position on Brexit is unchanged. So this is via Reuters. Obviously, you've got Bloomberg and Reuters here. Obviously, the key rival uh, news agencies. And so, you know, Reuters coming in with a, a counter headline, um, which, of course, brought things back lower, although cable is, has consolidated around about the midpoint of that initial spike. Um, so as we were speculating yesterday, you know, until the German or the UK government themselves confirmed that, that rumor, it was, you know, it was likely to, to potentially be um, not quite as sensational as the Bloomberg headline initially suggested. So that indeed was the case, and we've consolidated. And actually what's happening here, if I go to a daily chart, uh, sorry, hang on. Let's take this, uh, hang on, let me do this differently. Here, daily chart. Let me take that trend line off there. Um, so you know, more broadly, the pound has been weakening, of course, through the summer, generally speaking as you know a, a lack of developments um, a lack of progress on uh, the brexit front um, of course key break lower start of august and, and where are we yes lots of volatility over the last couple of weeks but where are we we're still below the 130 handle and you know that's a key price point uh, we tried to get up through that last week off that barnier comment but it failed yesterday we tested that area it failed and so ultimately whilst yes a bit of upside uh, we're still technically right down at the bottom here. And we're still technically in this downtrend that has uh, shaped the summer. Uh, we still do not have any kind of major you know, breakthroughs and progress on the Brexit negotiation, which is continuing to weigh on the value of the pound. So you know, certainly, despite that headline from yesterday, um, you know, technically still bearish here. Uh, let's have a look elsewhere. What's going on on crude oil? Here's the... Here's the crude oil chart. I'm going to start with a daily because I'm kind of bang in the middle of the range of the last few months here. Um, key move to the upside, of course, Monday, um, which saw us break that 70 handle. And that was an important kind of moment. But of course, it, it didn't last and it all came reversing back lower. And the key thing about that was, well, the key thing about this rally in the last couple of weeks is that we have not really managed to get above 70 properly. Yes, we've had intraday moves, but um, really we, we failed to close. Well, I guess on Thursday last week, we did close above 70. We closed at $70.05. But um, my point is we haven't really managed to close you know, a decent distance above 70. Yes, intraday moves above 70, but really in the longer term, uh, kind of a failure here at 70. And yesterday kind of confirmed that with downside um, and we're kind of we're hanging around the kind of low points from yesterday's session now. So it does look for now that that attempt at mounting a proper move up through 70 has failed. So we move into today's session. We do have the oil inventory data, of course, um, a day late because of the U.S. bank holiday. So that's going to be hitting the wires um, later on. It's actually at 4 p.m. We're going to look at the data calendar in a minute. Uh, but last night we had the, uh, the API figures. Um, announced and uh, I'll be covering that as we um, prepare for the um, inventory data uh, later on. So um, oil, yeah, hanging around yesterday's lows, you know, a key kind of failure at $70 in the end so far this week, you would say. All right, let's have a look at well, what else is happening. Here's, uh, here's another article just catching the attention. Bitcoin tumbles to two-week low. We don't talk about Bitcoin much, but um, you know, we have had uh, some weakness earlier on in August that seemed to have uh, 
gone away and, and Bitcoin driving back up above 7,000 bucks. But um, what's happened here? So you can't quite see the headline. Bitcoin drops on report. Goldman Sachs shelves trading desk plans. So this is Goldman's putting on hold any plans for a cryptocurrency trading desk. So that alone is enough to take Bitcoin um, down almost a thousand bucks, uh, pretty much in a straight line. So we do have a very important um, double bottom. And if I show you actually on the futures chart, um, keep an eye out for this. Um, so this is that kind of steep downside we've had yesterday and then steep downside overnight. Uh, but if we look at a daily chart, uh, the key levels, that key double bottom for the summer on the futures is at 5,800. So 5,800 bucks is absolutely the key price point for the summer. Um, and if you go back further, of course, technically, this is beautiful. Uh, the low of 2018 is pretty much, it's at 5,980 and then 5,800. And really, you kind of got a triple bottom here. Um, and, but the key thing to note is, look at the squares on this chart. Each time we hit this support level, we bounce, but each time the bounce is less strong. Each time the rebound um, gets to a, a lower, so we're getting lower highs here on the rebounds, which is a classic kind of bearish technical setup. We've got a descending wedge, and I would say, you know, each time we test 5,800, the more vulnerable uh, that support level is. And any break of 5,800, and I'd say you get a pretty straight line down to 5,000 in very quick order. This is very technically driven, behavioral driven. Uh, any break of 5,800 and 5,000 is going to trade like that, I would suggest. So keep your arm Bitcoin. It might well start to grab the headlines a little bit more. Um, got some attention overnight. Um, so let's have a look at the data calendar for today because we've got a decent amount of going on this afternoon. Not so much this morning, though. And we've had that German data at 7 o'clock and that's it, really nothing else with regards to any key European data. But certainly this afternoon's looking interesting. So we'll have uh, the ADP employment report coming at 1.15. Let's have a look at that chart. Um, he says, here it is. This is measuring uh, private sector employment growth. And so what was the expectation? Let's have a look. So 190,000 is what we're expecting, um, which would be a slight drop from last month's 219,000, so we had a very solid reading last month, better than expected July, that was the best reading since February, but we're expecting it to slide a little bit, but look, you know, anything around the 200 mark is, is fine, um, and if that happens, if it's anywhere near 200, I think it's really going to be a, a non-event from a market kind of sensitivity point of view. I think really to get the markets interested, you're going to need a number south of 150, which would put it at a 12-month low or anything above 250, which would, as you can see, put it at a 12-month high. I think you're going to need to see an extreme reading of that nature for financial markets to actually uh, be impacted by that. Uh, so that's ADP. Back to the calendar. More stuff, and perhaps I'd say more interestingly, coming at 3 o'clock. So I'd say the big figure of the day is that ISM non-manufacturing. Uh, we've got an expectation of 56.9. Uh, remember that back on Tuesday... We got the, the, the manufacturing number, so the ISM manufacturing, which came in at a 14-year high, uh, quite a phenomenal print above 61 for the first time since 2004, indicating that you know, quite stark contrast to Europe, actually U.S. economic momentum is really powering on and powering forwards. And as I mentioned on that day, Tuesday, as a result of that kind of data, uh, the Atlanta Fed uh, GDP tracker, their GDP growth forecasting model, ticked up to print a 5.1% a growth rate for quarter um, three. So growth momentum in the U.S. still nice and solid, which again is that key reason why, well, one of the reasons why you're getting U.S. equity market outperformance. Now it's time for the ISM non-manufacturing today. Okay, key data points these. Now, July was really bad. As you can see, July dipped below 56. That was the worst reading for 12 months. Um, the, what we're expecting today, 56.9. Uh, so that would put us uh, well back up into the, maybe you might call it the, the middle portion of the range that we've seen. Okay? Uh, anything below, on the downside, to look out for, anything below 55 would be notably bad. 
Anything back up around 59 plus would be very good. Anything above 60 would be extraordinary. Okay, so that'll be data coming uh, later on at three o'clock. Um, back to the calendar then. That's, that's, that, then we're into the oil inventory data. As I said, it's at four o'clock. So whenever we get a bank holiday Monday in the US, it bumps that oil inventory data um, forward by a day, but actually comes at 4 p.m. rather than the sort of 3.30 p.m. that we're used to on a Wednesday. It's 4 p.m. on a Thursday. Uh, so we're expecting a, a build, a slight build in crude. So we'll cover that nearer the time. Obviously, that's later on this afternoon. Uh, in terms of um, monetary policy speak, we've got ECB's Lautenschlager, hawkish, uh, talking um, around 12.45. We've got the Fed, Fed's Williams also uh, talking later this afternoon. Okay, um, So that's the shape of the scheduled uh, news flow that we have for today. Just back to finish on the charts then. Um, yeah, obviously negative sentiment. Let's, let's just check back in on the DAX to see what's going on because it does look like we flirted with 12,000 here which is S1 this morning. Uh, we spent a good half an hour you know, properly having a go at that level. And at the moment, we, we've just lifted a little bit higher. What, what's important is where we're trading now is kind of yesterday's low. Um, so we're just trying to get above that. So we've got a key kind of battleground here, opened lower. For now, S1 and 12,000, just about propping things up. But we kind of need to get back up above yesterday's low to really be confident that that 12,000 handle is going to remain intact. I'd say the next sort of 20, 30 minutes are quite critical here for the session. Any moves back to, to S1, and I think we might be vulnerable for a break lower, but, but any move back above yesterday's low will settle the nerves. Uh, the buyers will just take some confidence from that. Um, so, yeah, quite an important 20 minutes or so, I'd say. Keep your eye on the DAX as that kind of lead indicator. Um, just gold's caught my eye because you, as you're getting a bit of negative sentiment, um, you're getting gold lifting higher. So we this morning we've traded up above yesterday's high. Uh, let me just draw a line at yesterday's high there. Uh, so far today, R1's done the, the business in terms of resistance. Um, so we're kind of back above the 1200 handle. We spent obviously a few sessions uh, south of 1200 bucks. So gold just trying to form a platform at 1200 that that was the pivot yesterday it's the low of the day today so that's a key kind of support area obviously we've tested it today it's held nicely and we're kind of now having a go at getting back to r1 and, and maybe moving north of that if the dax let's say breaks lower then you may well see gold enjoy that uh, and, and make a move above 1205 um, okay that's it from me for now then um, enjoy your session and we'll be on the mic throughout the day okay thanks a lot